Right, I'd like to thank uh, Prof Adil, right, because uh, I tried with difficulty to find an ayat or a surah that link evidence-based medicine in Islam. So Prof Adil already mentioned it to you, what is actually evidence-based and in Islam actually there is a surah currently saying about evidence-based. Why this is important, I think most of you know, uh, in medicine, right, what we practice currently is are usually and mostly following the evidence base. Right? I still remember this one uh, prominent uh, examiner for our school who asked one of our candidates, probably that candidate, can I say, is an unfortunate candidate, because he was asked, right, is Islam, Islamic health or Islamic practices, is it as evidence based medicine? And of course, the student are not able to answer. At that time also, I was not able to answer. But uh, I told the, the, the examiners, I think Islam is actually already as evidence-based medicine, and our evidence come from Quran, Hadith, Sunnah, and also Qiyas from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and most, but not least, is the Fatwas, means from the Mushawaras of all the great thinkers of Islam. I think this is very important for us to know, right? So, one of the great thinkers of Islam, Sayyid Yusuf Al-Qaradawi, mentioned that the preservation of human species is the primary objective for marriage. And such preservation of species requires continued reproduction. So that's why I'm here, right? Because uh, to be the reproductive man, hopefully, uh, like to help others who are not able to conceive, able to conceive and to reproduce. But, right? Although Islam encourages having ma more, many children and bless both male and female progeny, it allows the Muslim to plan his family. But the key keywords there is said is due to valid reason and recognized necessities. So, in general, actually, Islam prohibits contraceptions, right? But in the, from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, many women who are loving and fertile. Right? For I will be proud of your great number before other nations of the day on the day of resurrection. So, as I said, in general, Islam prohibits contraceptions. But, right, Islam is a shum, uh, is a shumul, uh, okay? So there is an area, okay, where Islam allows you for contraceptions, and where Islam does allow leeway in terms of contraceptions. But the, the topic given to me is rawatan pemandulan. Pemandulan, for me, when it uh, become, uh, convert to English, for me, this uh, sterilization, right? Because you want to make somebody who is infertile. That's what I understand about pemandulan. So there are only two ways, or three ways actually, that can make or convert somebody from fertile to a subfertile. One is you kite, uh, tie the, the tubes, or what they call the tubal ligations and also hysterectomy. That's for the female, and for the male side, is what you call a vasectomy. Right. So, Islam prohibits at all the action of tubal ligation. Why? Because it changed the kudrat or the uh, flexion of a, a human body. That's what's been created by Allah. But, right, I will discuss later. Eh? I think you all know about this. You have heard about this, right, during my student time, right, people always say it, once a Caesar, Caesar means a Caesar in sections, always a Caesar. Is it true now? Yes. No, right? It is not true. Because we actually we do allow patients with only one Caesar in section to go for a trial of vaginal delivery. And it is, seems to be very successful. So that is actually not true. To go to the second one, Two previous car, always a Caesar. Is it true? And is it still true? Right? I think most of Malaysians uh, hospitals and OBGYN or obstetrician and gynecologists does practice that. And I do agree that previously, before my hijrah to Usim, right? I say hijrah because I only uh, entered Usim in 2011. Before that, I was somewhere else. And previously, my practice is always like that. When you have two previous serum sections, you must have also a serum section. And when you have a third serum section, the last options, right? 
you have to do a BTL. Right, so does it it's true currently? Right, and how about the Islamic practices among that? Right, let's look at the evidence. Okay, I, I found two evidence of regarding the vaginal birth after two cesarean section, comparing it with the repeat cesarean section. This is from the British Journal of ONG and Society, uh, ONG. Right, uh, came out in 2010. From here, what you can see down there, just a conclusion, comparing VBAC2 means two previous car with the repeat cesarean section, the hysterectomy rates were about 0.4%. Versus 0.63% and the P value of 0.63, which is not significant. All right? And it also mentioned that the maternal morbidity of VBAC2 was comparable to a repeat season section. All right? Looks like another evidence. A vaginal birth after caesarean for women with three or more prior caesarean. I'm sure not in Malaysia. This is done, also study done in UK. And they conclude women with three or more prior caesareans who attempt VBAC with vaginal birth after caesarean actually have similar rates of success. Right? So is there any evidence saying that we must practice after two caesarean sections, you have to go for the third caesarean section, then after that go for BTL? Right? If you follow this evidence, it's actually the, the current practice may be wrong. But in Malaysia, right, in Malaysia, I think uh, currently, as I said, no hospital will prefer right, to allow women with two previous season section to go for uh, vaginal birth, trial vaginal birth, because it takes uh, a, a strong will of the obstetrician to be stand, standing there right, and looking at the patient all the time. Right. So, this is probably what, right, should be the practice in Malaysia following the Islam, Islamic perspective and this is what has been practiced by me currently. As I said, I, after my hijrah. Okay. So, I do advise patients on the conditional BTL. Right? Islam, as I said, do provide, uh, prohibits BTL but Islam do allow us to make BTL or tubal ligation if we think that the subsequent pregnancy will endanger the mother's life. Right? I always tell my, my students this, right? Mother is a priority, baby is a bonus. Always remember that when you treat women or who are pregnant. Okay? So when does this condition allow or permit us obstetrician to do BTL for a woman who has currently on a third caesarean? I think when you, when you open up, you saw that there's a lot of massive additions. And I'm sure you know, subsequent pregnancy, subsequent uh, operation will actually cause harm, more harm to the women. Right? So in this condition, I think, right, for me, it is permissible for us to do BTL for that woman. Right? Then if we think that pre, the, the subsequent pregnancy will jeopardize, or cause harm to mother's life, right? The example of that, if you have a heart failure, if I'm sure you remember, there's an Asamangas complex or Asamangas syndromes, when there's a left to the right shunt, continuing pregnancy or subsequent pregnancy actually the carries a 90, more than 90% mortality to the women. Or those heart disease that the cardiologist said that this is quite in a, a, a stage four, right? in the New York Heart Association. So usually, we do not encourage women to go for BTL. And if we think that those women who had, even though we had a three previous car, there is other methods available and suitable for the women, and usually I'll defer BTL for her. Right? So this is probably one of the suggestions that I can make here. As I said, when you want to do a BTL, you, as a professional medical uh, person, should have an unbiased and a professional medical advice. Right? Do you think that BTL will actually save the mother's life? Please do BTL on her. But you think that there is no detrimental effect on her in, for her subsequent pregnancy? As I said, three previous car doesn't mean a BTL. 
the evidence does not actually follows and does not allow that right, for us to do BTL on patients just because of that. All right, vasectomy. In Malaysia, fortunately, uh, I have not even seen a man who come forward and, and tell me right, that they want a vasectomy. Never. All right? I've, uh, when I was in UK previously, uh, there's a patient, a uh, patient's husband came forward and let, uh, tell us, right, the team at that time, saying that, doctor, right, I've seen my wife suffers. Right? She has to endure nine months of pregnancy and that pregnancy is not without any complications. So I think this is my sacrifice to my wife, right, instead of asking her to go for another operation for BTL, I sacrifice myself for the vasectomy. Right, it's so honorable for that man, right? But um, in, in Islam, right, the action of or the vasectomy is definitely not allowed. Right? This is from the hadith from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud. He said that in the time of war, right, uh, we used engage in jihad in the company of messenger of Allah and our wife did not accompany us. Uh, sorry. We said, O Prophet of Allah, shall we not castrate ourselves? He forbade us from doing so. Right. So, basically, as I said, to rawatan per mandolan of hospitalization usually refers to the permanent sterilization. So now I'm going to discuss about the birth control or merancang keluarga in Islam. Surah Al-Baqarah ayat Surah ayat 233 means, right, mothers may breastfeed their children two complete years of whoever wishes to complete the nursing and all the others, right? This is one, what I'm going to show the, the evidence in the Quran and in the Hadith that allows us or allows patients to go for family planning or birth control, right? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam term intercourse with a nursing mother or rather the intercourse which result in pregnancy while the mother is nursing a baby as gilah, right? Pregnancy would pollute the milk dust causing great harm to the suckling infant. So among the prophet remarks on this issue is do not kill your children secretly. For Gilah overtakes the rider and throws him from the horse. But the Prophet did not prohibit intercourse with a nursing mother. So what does it mean is that Rasulullah SAW prohibits pregnancy while the women are still suckling or uh, breastfeeding the child. Right? But does not prohibit sexual intercourse. So there must be a way that to prevent right, co uh, pregnancy in this type of woman. So this is the, what you call it, the evidence saying that contraception or birth planning is allowed. All right. So from hadith of uh, Jabir radiallahu, radiallahu an, right, kami pernah melakukan al-azal di zaman Rasulullah, what is al-azal? This is what we call a coitus interruptus. Right? Before you feel for this is for the man, before you feel that you're going to ejaculate, pull out this and then ejaculate outside. Okay? Uh, dan perkara ini sampai ke pengetahuan baginda, tapi baginda tidak pula menegah kami daripada melakukan perkara tersebut. So, from this evidence, it is known that contraception or birth control is allowed. Right? This is from one of the place that I went. Uh, recently with the USIN team. Okay, can you see that? So you can't, can't see that? Right. There is one that you see. Ayo ikut KB, dua anak cukup. Right? And the photos there shows a, probably a girl and a boy. Right. So this is one of the, the country that I went. So have this. Right? So they, they, they encourage their, their people to only have two. Right. So, is birth control permissible? In Islam, yes, if it is done consensually for valid reasons. Right? And what is the valid reasons? 
they said that this is from the juris of uh, Ulamax, right? Putting of pregnancy until such time when the spouses are in better position to shoulder the responsibility of parenting. Or to allow space between pregnancy in order to provide proper nurturing and care to the existing children. So when do birth control is not allowed? If you are fear of poverty or is it as a permanent measure? It's what Allah said in Surah Al-Isra, don't kill your children for fear of poverty. It is we who provide sustenance for them and you. Verily, killing them is a most heinous crime. Just a simple photos uh, to show you the principles when, when does fertilization occur. Right? If you look at it, okay, uh, usually fertilization occur in the tube, in the fallopian tube, around day three to day four. Right? And then it goes into the endometrium lining and implantation usually after day five. And subsequently, right, if you're pregnant, you're going to continue. So the act or the contraceptions, uh, the contraceptions, action of contraception prevent ovulation, example in the oral contraceptive pills. Right? It does prevent contrast, uh, ovulations because of the estrogen component. Right? Prevent implantation in the IUCD. Right? And prevent insemination in those barrier methods. Example, azal or coitus interrupters, condoms, caps, vaginal caps, and so on. Right. So in oral contraceptive pills, it does prevent fertilization. It has two uh, modes of action. The estrogen inhibits ovulation. The progesterone thicken the cervical mucus. It is a non-permanent method. And most Islamic juries allow right, contraceptive by oral contraceptive pills. IUCDs, there is some controversies around this because it only inhibits implantation. Some juries said when there is already a fertilization, right, it is already considered alive. Some juries said, and most juries does follow said, that roh of uh, life means after the roh being introduced. In Shafi'i, roh usually around 40 days. Right. So if it follows that, and most juries do agree that if you follow that roh is only introduced in day 40 of life, Preventing implantation does not, right, commit, uh, do not, uh, what you call it, meaning of abortion or termination of pregnancy. So those who believe that this roh is only after, uh, life is only after roh has been introduced, so do allow IUCDs. Those who still believe that life begins in fertil during fertilization do not allow. IUCD as a method of contraception, All right? Okay. So currently, probably for me, my suggestion, if you have another method, probably you use the other method first before right, discussing on IUCD for our patients. Condom is always allowed, right? This should not be a problem. But, right, for men, you have to remember, you have, you must ask wife, for permission, right? You cannot simply use condom or coitus interrupters without your wife's permission. Remember that. Okay? And some of the common situation that I've encountered, especially as the deputy dean for the students, right? Student ask me, can they get married? Right? This is quite a common question. Some even ask me whether they can have a pre- marriage uh, course in our faculty. Well, I said I, I, I'm not against marriage, right? I'm not against pregnancy, but, right, by right, when you nurture, nurture a child, you have to give full attention to your child. So if possible, if you want to get married, right, you are allowed actually, right, to postpone your pregnancy until when you have in a, in a better situation. Right, regarding the emergency contraceptions, as I said, morning after pills prevent fertilization. Okay, 
if IUCD prevent implantation. Okay. Emergency contraception for me, it is only allowed in certain situations, example, when the patients are rape victims. Right? Do not use it freely for you. Right? The night before you think that, ah, I want to have baby. Suddenly you wake up next morning and say, oh, I don't want to have that baby. Right? Then you take your emergency contraception. Then I think it is not allowed. All right? So only in certain situation. So again, is it right for the government to ask or to, to, to put a policy saying that all of their people should have only two children? Right? The fake authority said uh, the government are forbid to force contraception on its people and because it violates their freedom and should not be the policy for the government. I'm, I'm sure Malaysia government does not have that. All right. Okay. In summary, okay, permanent sterilization definitely is not allowed unless you have a certain medical conditions, right, that will allow that. Vasectomy for men, right, fortunately is not allowed. All right. And birth control are actually allowed. Depends on situations, but only as a temporary measures, and should not be a permanent methods. And Islam, we encourage you to ask permission right, from your spouse. Especially for the male, you have to tell your female companion or your spouse that you want to practice azal or when you want to wear condom. All right? So I think that's all. Thank you very much.